Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And before we sit, I want us to make one prayer and then we hear the word of the Lord. In Mark chapter 5 and verse number 25, if you could give it unto us in the KJV. And the Bible says, a certain woman which had an issue of blood for 12 years. This is a, this is a story in the Bible that there was a certain woman which had the issue of blood for 12 years. Verse number 26. Verse number 26. Uh -huh. and had suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all that she had and was nothing buttered but rather grew worse in verse number 27 the bible says when she heard of jesus came in the press behind and touched his garments verse number 28 for she said if i may touch if i may touch but his clothes i shall be whole. And many of us, yours may not be the issue of blood. Yours may be an issue of a job. Gathered here, we are also a representation of issues. Many, we've come here with different issues, going through different things, but fighting different battles. But today, I want us to stretch our faith and say, Lord, I want to touch the hem of your garments. I want to touch the hem of your garments because I know when I touch the hem of your garments there shall be wholeness. And today Jesus is releasing the grace to be whole even in this house in the name of Jesus. I who is speaking to me, to you, I do not have the power I do not have the ability to help you but there is Jesus who is in the house and he has the power to make you whole, to make you whole. I want us to lift up a prayer and pray that Jesus as we hear your word, may I touch the hem of of your garments. May I touch the hem of your garments that I may be made whole, that my, my health may be made whole, that my family may be made whole, that my mind may be made whole, that my heart may be made whole in the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody lift up a prayer that Jesus, I am here for no, no, nothing else but to touch the hem of your garments. I want to touch the hem of your garments. I want to touch the hem of your garments uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, and even as we touch the the hem of, our, of the, the garments of Jesus. Uh, I speak wholeness uh, in every sphere of our lives. Uh, I speak wholeness uh, in our finances. Uh, I speak wholeness uh, in our minds. Uh, I speak wholeness uh, in everything that concerns us. Uh, in the name of Jesus Christ, uh, we are getting out of this place whole. Uh, we are getting out of this place whole. Uh, those of us who came in this place broken, uh, you came in this place discouraged. Uh, you are getting out of this place whole uh, because Jesus is here and we are about to touch the hem of his garments in the name of Jesus Lord we cry may we touch the hem of your garments because in it we are whole in the name of Jesus Christ we pray believing and trusting and God's people say amen and God's people say amen would you celebrate the king of kings as you have your blessed seats in the name of Jesus Amen. Welcome to Shiloh Worship Center, the place of breakthrough. My name is Paul Monene, and I'm glad to bring the word of the Lord to you this morning. I want to take this opportunity to honor God's servant, starting with our bishop and mom, Bishop Jimmy, and Pastor Alice in absentia, and our pastors, Pastor Brian in absentia, Pastor Beatrice, Pastor Richard, and every servant of God. Thank you for the opportunity to bring the word of God. Amen. Are you ready for the word? Are you ready for the word? Today we are redigging the wells of our fathers. We are still in redigging. That's the theme of our year as Deliverance Church. And we are still in redigging the wells of our fathers. And therefore this morning, I want us to read, redig the wells of transformation. The wells of transformation. Somebody say transformation. I told you tafuta jirani mwenye anakaa kuna royal church mwenye atakusaidia kushika hiki kitu si ni sawa mwenye anakoa kwa the heart they are smiling they are glowing we are redigging the wells of transformation and i am in romans chapter number 12 and verse number 2 romans chapter 12 and verse number 2 this is a, a common scripture that we know and we've heard of it but i want us to look at it today and the Bible says, and do not be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewal of your minds that you may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect 
will of God. One more time. And do not conform to this world, but be he transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is, uh, what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. We are redigging the wells of transformation. One of the things that you look when you study the, the, the uh, when you study our fathers, when you, we, we look at the men who have gone ahead of us, is that they were they were natural men. They were born from. Uh, just normal backgrounds, most of them coming from poor families, most of them coming from uh, uh, str struggling families. They, in other words, they were introduced to life the way you were introduced. They were introduced to life the way we were introduced to. But there is something that must happen along the way that made them to do the extraordinary. There must be something that happened along the way that changed their lives, and therefore that's why we see that they are able to do more than other mere men have done more than other fathers who have done blessed be the name of jesus and this is what we are calling transformation many of the times that we look at this scripture and look at it from one perspective we look at it from do not be conformed to the patterns and we have uh, looked at it as patterns are seen and conforming to maybe fornication and conforming to adultery and conforming to you know name it Many other times that we've looked at it from that perspective. But also that scripture speaks of another perspective that do not conform to the standards. This means to the natural settings of life. That is how life was introduced to us. There is the definition of life that we were given to. For example, we were given life as kunazaliwa, uh, unaenda shule, unaenda university, and then from there the rest of your life is paying bills. That's the culture that we were introduced. Therefore, we were not introduced to God's ability and God's purpose over our lives. Blessed be the name of Jesus. If you could give that, us this scripture in the, in the message version, maybe this will make uh, more sense to us. Romans chapter 12 and verse number 2, as I lay the background. Aha, let us read it together. Do not, don't become well adjusted to your culture that you fit into it even without come on let us read it together one more time one two do not become so well adjusted to your culture eh, eh, that you fit into it even without thinking but you instead do what instead fix your attention on god eh, eh, you will be changed from inside out readily recognize what he wants from you blessed be the name of jesus in other words it's, called, it's calling us to a place of transformation a place where we do not look at life as a, as as a, an adventure of paying bills we do not look at life as a, as a struggle but we look at life from a perspective of god brought me here for an assignment he has a purpose for me in other words i am not going to look at life as the world looks at it and I am willing to pay the sacrifice and to be transformed and to do what God requires for me because I am changed from inside out. So if you are writing down, transformation is the change from inside out out transformation is the change from inside out where we are completely changed we do not look we are not held by our culture we are not held by the default setting of life we are not held by the frustrations of life but we are changed and we are pursuing that which god wants us to pursue blessed be the name of jesus i said blessed be the name of jesus and i will say to you this morning transformation begins in the mind transformation begins in the mind. When you study our fathers and you look at them, you will notice that there are people who think differently. There are people who have been transformed in their minds. And therefore, you may change your closet, but if you do not change your mind, you are the same person. You may change that boyfriend, but if you have not changed your mind, you will have the same problems transferred. You may change that girlfriend or that fiancé, but if your mind is not changed, there is nothing that has changed. Transformation begins from your mind. Look at your neighbor and tell them, neighbor, transformation begins in the mind. It doesn't begin kwa luku, no, 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 no. Unaza badlisha luku, lakini wewe ni yule, 
you led. Transformation begins in the mind. That's why scripture is said, do not conform, but be he transformed by the renewal of our minds. And therefore, beloved, as children of God, I am praying for us, may we be transformed in our minds. Let us not look at life uh, the way other people look at it. Let us not embrace life the way people look at it, but let us be transformed. Be transformed. Be transformed. Blessed be the name of Jesus. When you look at Genesis chapter number 26, which was the scripture of the year, God appears to Isaac and tells him, do not go down to Egypt. See, even in Asema. And when you study scripture, you realize it was a pattern. Going down to Egypt was not only a thing of the moment, but there was a pattern of people going down to Egypt. When there was no food, there was a mindset that we need to go down to Egypt. And therefore, it required a transformed man like Isaac. It required God to transform his mind. And notice that it is not going to Egypt that you find help, that I can still help you from this place. I can help you in Gerard. In the land of famine. Blessed be the name of Jesus. And therefore, us as believers, we have the faith that God can help us even here in Kenya. God can help us where we are because we are people of a transformed mind. Help me preach to your neighbor and tell them, neighbor, be transformed. Be transformed. See, we, 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 are not, we, we should not think that it is in Kenya, if we remain in Kenya, we will struggle. We have to go to the States or to go where to get help. No, no, no. If you have that opportunity, God bless you. Thank you. You go. But even here in Kenya, God has the ability to lift us up. That is the mind of a believer, that God is able. I have a transformed mind. Help me preach to your neighbor one more time and tell them, neighbor, transformation begins in the mind blessed be the name of jesus it requires a transformed mind like our bishop moved from easily as you have always been told to come here to zimmerman a land that was full of reeds there was nothing in a place of nothingness he had the options maybe to go to runda to go to kilimani to go and start a church up there kiambu road but it required a transformed mind not to see the problem but to see that there is an opportunity even here in this problem blessed be the name of jesus and therefore i am speaking to people here who god i has spoken to you, maybe to move into a certain sphere of ministry, maybe to move into a certain sphere of business. May you move there with a transformed mind. May we move there in a, trans in a transformed mind in the name of Jesus Christ. Some of us, God has called us maybe to quit that job and go and start your company, but we are looking at it from, from a place of conformity. We are looking at the economic status of the country. We are looking at the problems that we are going through. I pray for you this morning may we embrace and have a transformed mind somebody say amen, amen. somebody say amen. amen and these are the dangers of conformity when you conform conformity muffles our potential and the ability that God has placed in us when we conform to the patterns, to the culture, to what we, uh, is thought to be right, it does what? It muffles the potential that God has placed in us and the ability. Child of God, there is a lot of potential in you. There is a lot of ability that God has placed in you. The problem is we have conformed to the patterns of the world and therefore we are not able to manifest God's ability in our lives. We are not able to manifest God's ability in our lives. Conformity muffles up the ability that God has placed in our lives. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Some of us have been called to be CEOs and to open up companies, but simply because we were called and we were presented to life that you have to go to school and look for a job and stay there and work until you are 60 years old, you, you, you still think that this is what I was called for. But I came to tell you, child of God, there is ability in you. You. There is potential in you. Go into that field. Go and adventure. Go and, and, and get to know what is God saying about me. The potential that is in me. Somebody say amen. Preach to your neighbor and tell them neighbor. There is potential and ability. Look for a believing neighbor and tell them neighbor. In you there is potential and there is ability. Somebody say amen. 
Abu, help me think about it. Imagine if our father, Bishop Jimmy, had conformed to the pattern of finishing school and going to be employed. Where would we be? Would we be talking about 1.2 billion right now that we are talking about? Would we be talking about the things? Would he have, has done? Would he have done what he has done? When you, when you think about our father's uh, Bishop JB, he says he was called to go to a flying school, but he knew that he was called to be a minister of the word. And therefore, after finishing school, he went immediately into starting ministry. And we are seeing what the Lord has done. When we study the life of our Bishop, Dr. Mark Arioki, we realize that he was a teacher. He was a teacher and he resigned. He resigned to pursue what God has had called him to, to do. And that's why we see the potential. We are not any less. I said we are not any less. The same potential that was in our fathers. It is in us. The thing is for us to be transformed in our... Uh, help me preach to your neighbor and tell them, neighbor, be transformed. The same ability that God had placed upon Bishop Jimmy, upon Bishop JB, upon Bishop Marker, and many other fathers. The same potential is in me. And therefore, it's for me to receive a transformed mind and to, be and, and to be transformed in the name of Jesus. Somebody say amen. amen. Dangers of conformity. Number two, conformity drags us down and hold, holds, holds us at a place of immaturity. Conformity holds us down. Drags us down and holds us at a place of immaturity. When I talk about immaturity, uh, immaturity, don't look at it from one perspective of only maybe kukua, any kukua mtumzima, like, you know, kukua. See, that's how we think, immaturity. No, 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 no. You know your spiritual life may be mature. You can have financial life that is not mature. You can have things that are not mature. Blessed be the name of Jesus. And therefore, conformity to the standards and the patterns of the world, it drags us down. Inatuvuta nyuma kabisa. Inatuvuta nyuma tunangangana. Blessed be the name of Jesus Christ. Look at your neighbor and tell them, neighbor, conformity drags us down. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Number three, conformity hinders God from bringing the best out of you. It hinders God from bringing the best out of us. And not because he doesn't have the power, but it is because he has given us something that we call the will power. God has given us the will power. God has given us the will power. And therefore, if you decide to conform to the patterns of the world, you hinder God from bringing out the best in you. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Therefore, I pray for us that we shall not conform to the patterns of this world. We shall not conform to the culture. We shall not conform to the normal default setting of life, but we shall look to pursue what has God said about me? What has God placed in me? Where has God called me into? Blessed be the name of Jesus. Some of us has be, have been called to the mission field. I pray may you go there. Do not conform to the patterns of the world because in it, in it is, the, is God's ability. In it is God's best for you. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Somebody say, I will not conform. I am receiving a transformed mind. I pray for yourself and say in the name of Jesus, I receive the grace to be transformed. I shall not be conformed to the patterns of this world. I shall be transformed by the renewal of my mind in the name of Jesus Christ so that the ability that God has placed in me may be manifested. The potential that God has placed in me may be manifested in the name of Jesus Christ. Help me preach to your neighbor and tell them, neighbor, be transformed by the renewal of your mind. Look for neighbor church. neighbor. Do not conform, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. Somebody say amen. In Philippians chapter 2 and verse number 5, Paul says, Let this mind be in you, which also was in Christ Jesus. Let this mind be in you, which also was in Christ Jesus. There is a certain mindset that Christ had. There was a certain mindset that Jesus had. And that's why they come to look for him, Mary and his brothers. And he says that my brothers are not... You, there are these people who, who, uh, who, who, who listen and hearken to the voice of my father. Blessed be the name of the Lord. There is a mind that Christ had, that child of God we ought to embrace, to think differently, not to conform to the patterns. Blessed be the name of Jesus. And now, 
What brought transformation? That is the question. Now we've talked about conformity and transformation. I want to answer a question. What brought transformation in the lives of our fathers? This is just a little bit. I have three points and then I'll be out of your way. What brought transformation in the lives of our fathers? Blessed be the name of Jesus. And number one, if you're writing it down, transformation in the lives of our fathers was brought about by vision. Transformation in the lives of our fathers was brought about by vision. If you're writing it down in Proverbs chapter number 29 and verse number 18, scripture says that where there is no vision, my people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. Where there is no uh, uh, vision, that's the King James Version, where there is no vision, my people perish. But he that keepeth the law, he is happy. Now, this thing about vision is quite technical, especially for us as young people. Many are the times that we think vision is building houses. Many are the times that we think vision is having some, re some rental income. Many are the times that we think vision is building a multinational company. That is okay. But this is vision to us as believers. Vision is laying hold on God's purpose for creating us and sticking to it. Vision is laying hold is laying hold on God's purpose for creating us and sticking to it. Laying hold on the purpose why God created us and sticking to it. In other words, vision is when you understand the reason for living. Why do I live? When you have the broader picture of what God has laid for you, this is vision. Blessed be the name of Jesus. And therefore, when we get to, to do great things, to start the multinational companies, multi-million companies, those are just but assets to help us fulfill our vision. Somebody say amen. For example, when we look at uh, projects like Cornerstone, when we look at projects uh, that help us pro propagate income for the church, it is for the greater vision that, that God has placed in the lives of our fathers. We were looking at the budget last year, and we saw the contribution made maybe by Cornerstone and the different facets that God has given us here in church. These are to fulfill the vision that God has placed in the life of our father of having five campuses. And therefore, you as a believer, even as you think of establishing that company, even as you think of establishing that business, it should only be an asset for you to fulfill God's purpose in your life. It is not for you to boast and to brag around. No, 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 no. It is just an asset. For example, some of us, God will help us to establish those things so that we may help those in need. The, the God will help us establish companies so that we may be a blessing to the orphans. God will help us establish those companies that you may be a kingdom financier. It is not for you to boast, blessed be the name of Jesus. But many of the times that we have, a, we have a mindset, especially as young people, I am going to, I'm receiving the grace to establish a multinational company. It shall not happen. I said it shall not happen. If your, if your mindset is that, it shall not happen. Now think about the assignment that God has given you and then look at it from that perspective with a transformed mind and know that this business, it is to bring glory to the kingdom of God. It is to bring glory to the work of God. Let us embrace a transformed mind. Somebody say amen. Let us embrace a transformed mind. Now the problem is, us in our generation, many of us, we don't have a vision. We do not know what's God's purpose of our lives. And this is the result. Life is reduced to a burden. Life is reduced to a, bu a burden. I will quote Bishop, uh, uh, Bishop Oyedepo and he says that life is reduced to a burden except you are running with a vision. Life is reduced to a burden except you are running with a vision. Imagine waking up for 70 plus years every day just to pay bills. See you in sana. But if you have a vision, it excites you to wake up every morning. If you know this is what I am pursuing, somebody say amen. amen. Your vision informs you. Your vision informs you. Today we are learning. Your vision informs you. And this is, the things that, this is one of the things that your, our vision informs us. It informs us this, for you to qualify to be a vision bearer, you must first be a vision supporter. 
for us to qualify to be vision bearers because we will receive the impartation and some of us today after this service will get to know what's God's purpose for my life but for us to qualify to be vision bearers we must first be vision supporters we must first be vision supporters many of our fathers when you look at them they did not come from nowhere Bishop Jimmy did not land in Zimmerman. And he was just uh, an unbeliever somewhere and, and then he just landed in Zimmerman. No, 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 no. Before he was a vision bearer, he was a supporter of a certain vision. He was a supporter of a vision in his Lee. In his Lee. I'm right, right? He was a supporter in vision of a vision in his Lee. You'll hear of stories like his matatu was the one which was used to carry worship teams and to go for crusades. Look at your neighbor and tell them, neighbor, for you to qualify to be a vision bearer, you should be a good vision supporter. Ah, look for a neighbor when you're in a royal church. Be a neighbor. Be a vision supporter. Right now, we are being called to we are called, we are we are being called to finance the work of the kingdom. Let us be vision supporters. Bishop said on Sunday that regardless, with that hundred shilling, you are a kingdom financier. Ah, see how many finances with two hundred shilling. That is finances. Let us support the work of the kingdom some of us we have some beautiful voices sitting there you have a beautiful voice no 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 but you are thinking maybe i will sing in my youtube channel that will have one million views they will know me but you are not ready to support this vision here i am telling you it shall not you must be a vision supporter help me preach to your neighbor and tell them neighbor be a vision supporter some of us still, you are an employee. You are working at that company. You are working at that organization. But you have a mindset that one day, and you are trusting God, you shall establish a company. I came to bring good news for you. You must first be a vision supporter before you qualify to be a vision bearer. Uh, let me preach to your neighbor one time. I want to support that vision. Some of us, we are looking forward to get married. Like in the committee, ya watu wa harusi, hatuendi. Tunaito tupange viti kwa harusi ya mutu. Tunaito tutupanguse magari. We are not coming, let me tell you. Hey, you do not qualify to, to be a vision bearer. You must first be a vision. Therefore, from today, from this service, we make up our minds to be good employees. We make up our minds to support the work of the kingdom with the little that we have. Blessed be the name of Jesus. We are looking forward to build mansions, to do great work for Jesus. Some of us here, yeah, God will lift us up and do apostolic work, Pastor Wanjala. For you to qualify to do that work, you need to support this vision and be faithful. Because scripture reminds us that he who is faithful is with little, he can be trusted with much. Therefore, it starts from the place of supporting be a vision supporter support other people's relationship support 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 jameni as you trust the lord somebody say amen for those of us who are in families and we are children may you be a vision supporter for sure whatever you sow so shall you Reap, be a vision supporter, support that family, support your dad, support your mom, those of us who are working, support them. And one day, your children will support you. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Therefore, we have said, be a vision. <sighs> Write this down. Life is unveiled by a vision. Life is unveiled by a vision. Driven by passion. Life is unveiled by a vision, driven by passion, activated by planning, activated by planning, activated by planning, engineered by sacrifice, engineered by sacrifices, and actualized by tireless pursuits and actualized by tireless pursuit. Life is unveiled by a vision, driven by passion, activated by planning, engineered by sacrifice, and actualized by tireless pursuit. That I have gotten it from Dr. Miles. Life is unveiled by vision, 
driven by passion, activated by planning, engineered by sacrifice, and actualized by tireless pursuit. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Therefore, we've talked about vision. When you look at that, vision gives you passion. And then it's engineered by sacrifices. Things will not come on a silver platter. Things will not come on a silver, silver platter. And it is actualized by tireless pursuit. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Last Sunday, I, I, I had the opportunity to just look at our father and just study. So he came. He went to the first service there. He spoke about kingdom financing, right? Before the service ended, he came here. He came in the first service before Pastor Brian finished. From there, he went back for the second service. From there, he finished that. He came here uh, before we ended the second service. From there, he went and spoke about kingdom financing, the, me the meeting that was there with the financiers, Buenas Fesana, and many other meetings that we do not know. For sure, that's a 70-year-old man doing all that kind of a thing, and you, you are not tirelessly pursuing your life. You are not putting in sacrifice. Sacrifice. Now by the time he Stacy won us well. I was just thinking when I was preparing this. I was thinking now, our father, the tireless pursuit. Therefore, life is unveiled by a vision. It is driven by passion. It is activated by planning. It is engineered by sacrifice. It is actualized by tireless. Life is unveiled by vision. Uh -huh. It is activated by, different by passion. It is activated by planning. It is engineered by sacrifice. It is actualized by tireless pursuit. Number two, what brought about transformation in the lives of our fathers? <coughs> what brought about transformation in the lives of our fathers? Investing in reading relevant and value-adding books. Inve investing in reading relevant and value. For us, at this generation, those two points are very important. Investing in reading relevant and value-adding books. Blessed be the name of Jesus. I want to give you an assignment. When you go to every office of our Father, you will notice there is huge investment of books. There are books everywhere. There is a shelf that is full of books. I am telling for sure. No, 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 no. All those books that you see there, those, those men, they are readers. I am in Daniel chapter number two and verse, uh, chapter number nine and verse number two. Daniel chapter nine and verse number two, but because we need a scriptural evidence. Uh -huh. In the first year of his reign, let us read it together. In the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by the number of years that specified by the word of the Lord through Jeremiah the prophet. He understood, not just by the spirit, some spirit that appeared to him, some angel, and appeared to him and made him understood. No, no, no. He understood by the books. For us to be transformed and received a transformed mind, we need, we ought to be readers of value-adding and relevant books. Help me preach your neighbor and tell them, neighbor, you ought to be a reader of value-adding and relevant books. <laughs> Blessed be the name of Jesus. Because reading boosts our understanding. Reading boosts our understanding. We ought to be readers. We ought to be readers. And this is what Dr. Miles says. He who does not read is not better than he who cannot read. He who does not read is not better than he who cannot read. For us, God bless us. Thank, thank the Lord for our parents. Most of us, we were taken at least for, in the 8 for 4 or 8 4 system. We can read English. But this is it. He who does not read is not better than he who cannot read. Kwa Kiswahili, I say, Mahwamba, yule ambaye hasomi, si atiaho, afadhali, kuliko mwenye hajui ku. So, in other words, kama hausomi, wewe na ule mtu mwenye hajui kusoma, mwenye au kanyanga shule ya mtu, mkose, what's up? We ought to be readers and one of the things that we ought to read is the word of god we need this is a relevant book this is a relevant book in second timothy chapter number four and verse number 12 in second timothy chapter number four and verse number 12 this is when the apostle paul was abandoned and he was just about to die and tells timothy come before winter and therefore he says and uh <laughs> tie what yes that one i have sent to 
Ephesus. Eh, hey, verse number 13. Bring the clock that I have left with Kappas and Taurus when you come. And what? The books. And especially what? The, patches, the parchments. They are like notes. They are like notes. And therefore you realize, bring the what? The books. And the parchment. We ought to be readers. Child of God. In actually, even if you argue or run upside down, turn, we ought to be readers for us to receive a transformed mind. Some of us, a book, a financial book will transform your finances. Far above and adding to me, shouting here and receiving, releasing the grace of financial breakthrough, far above that, we ought to read and understand the principles of taxation. We need to understand some of the things. Don't engage yourself in conversation and you do not know, you are not sure uh, what you are talking about. No, no, no. Get to understand the economy. Look at your neighbor and tell them, get to understand. Boost your understanding. Read relevant books. Eh, yeah, read relevant books. Watch it too. You see, the Dijeks was saying that we Africans and blacks, we have a problem because we can talk from here to someone can take a 16 hour flight talking but we cannot just take an hour and read a book we cannot even and it is worse for us even as believers we cannot we are not readers of the bible we do not know what is in here and this is our guide child of god let us be neighbor for you to be transformed you ought to be a reader look for another neighbor mwanyanaka royal church mwambie neighbor you ought to be a reader. This is a command that we as Shailians, we ought to be readers. Hey, have information. That scripture, you misquoted it. So that next time I can do my homework, well, let us be what? Readers. Let, get, let, let us get to understand the concepts. Let us get to understand especially the basic things. Get to know something about marriage. Get to know something about uh, men's psychology, women's psychology. Well, how oh, is your Melissa? But now, <laughs> just a little, you know, what they have provided in the internet. Hey, at least I know this. I may not know everything, but I know something. <laughs> Blessed be the name of Jesus. Get to know something. Get to know something. Anyway, buona sana. Amen. Amen. Yes, be a reader. Transformation comes from reading books, for sure. Number three, and to my last point, what transformed our minds? Even if you've not gotten everything else, please get this one thing. What, about, what brought transformation in the lives of our fathers is divine encounters. Divine encounters. Divine encounters. In the beginning of the year, we did this in our midweek services, please, if you can, please come for the midweek services. If there is nothing, you're just having some nice vibes and inshallah, please make time and come for the come for the like come for the midweek service. This is where we have time to learn more. We have time to just pray and just soak in the presence of God. Look at your neighbor and tell them, neighbor, please come for the midweek service. we are Jashika. neighbor. I forbid you. <laughs> From, 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 from not coming from the midweek service. If you are, not, you are not doing anything, if you are not doing anything, go to home and you are having some good time, please come for the midweek service. Here we get to learn. Eh? Because of the nature of our services, we are, there are very many things that need to be done. And therefore, when you come for the midweek service, you have an ample time to learn and to pray. Therefore, divine encounters, we did this. And therefore, I'll just pass through it. Um, <clears throat> The place of encounter is the place where divinity meets humanity. Is the place where divinity meets humanity. The place of encounter is where divinity meets humanity. It's the place where we are transformed and God's ability and God's power is, uh, we are able to receive God's power. Therefore, the place of encounter is a place where divinity meets humanity. The place of encounter is an avenue where we are able to, div to draw divine strength. The place of encounter is an avenue where we are able to draw divine strength. When we talk about vision, when we talk about the grace even to read, when you talk about those things, God's purpose over your life, this is found in the place of encounter. When you meet God, he's able to reveal to you what he wants of you, what he, is, he expects of you, what you ought to do. Because the question and the, uh, and the agony and the and the cry of our hearts is, Lord, what do you want me to do? What, what did you brought me here to do? This, you can only find it in the place of the encounter. Blessed be the name of Jesus. I said, blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. 
The place of encounter is a place where we draw divine strength. Indeed, when you look at the life of our fathers, what they've done, it is not human strength. When you look at the programs of our fathers at where they are right now, it cannot be human strength. We joke with Pastor Joy and, and just talk about the lives of our fathers and how they have programs as times 10. And at their age, let me tell you for sure, that is only divine strength. That is only divine strength. Having meetings after meetings, if you rate them with normal men, uh, maybe our grandfathers down there, or just normal men who we know at their age there, this can only be divine strength. And it is found at the place of encounter. Blessed be the name of Jesus. And therefore, how do we position ourselves for encounters? As I wind, I, as I, as I wind up, how do we position ourselves for encounter? Where do this humanity meet divinity? Where is this place that I meet? How can I uh, draw divine strength? Blessed be the name of the Lord. Number one, how to position yourself for uh, encounters is getting back to the place of prayer. It is in the place of prayer where we position ourselves for encounters. This is where we meet God. We meet Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Look at your neighbor and tell them, neighbor, get back to the place of prayer. Show me a man of prayer and I'll show you a man who has encounters. Number two, having the God kind of faith. Let me just read it to you because of time, so that we can have time to pray. Having the God kind of faith, believing the God kind of faith that was in Jacob, that he says, I'm not letting you go until you bless me. I have the faith that you, Lord, can bless me. This is the place where God sees the anger and he sees the desire, and therefore he comes himself, uh, himself and reveals himself to you, to us as his children. And number three, how do we position ourselves for encounter? It is getting back to the place of righteousness. God does not associate with sin. God does not associate with sin. He is our only God. For us to have an encounter with Jesus, for us to encounter him and him alone, we ought to get back to the place of righteousness, walking right with God, walking right with God. And therefore, three points, how do we position ourselves to, uh, for encounters, getting back to the place of prayer? having the God kind of faith, and number three, getting back to the place of righteousness. Noah was a righteous man, and therefore, that's why he was able to have an encounter with Jesus. That is Genesis chapter 6 and verse number 9. And therefore, that is my wrap today. Number one, the road to transformation, vision. Number two, the road to transformation, reading relevant books. And number three, the road to transformation, and counters. So you say together with me, somebody say vision. vision. Number two, reading, value, adding, and relevant books. And number three, divine encounters. Would we stand up on our feet? We pray for the remaining minutes, and then I'll be out of your way. Mume Shika Neno, transformation. Ebu, tell your neighbor, ask your neighbor, have they received something that will transform them? Ask your neighbor, talk to your neighbor, and tell them, what have you gotten in that old class, in those many things? What have you gotten? Eh? Talk to your neighbor. Na kama uya kuongele, shita fita mwenye akona Royal Church. Mwambie, muulize nini ya meshika? Eh, asikwambie, tu tumebarikiwa, tumebarikiwa. Tumebarikiwa na nini? What did I, what did you go home with? Come on, talk to your neighbor. Talk to your neighbor. Uh, I cannot see you talking to your neighbor. Look for somebody. Talk to them. Ask them what they have gotten. That life is unveiled by vision, driven by passion, activated by planning, uh -huh. engineered by sacrifice. Uh -huh. And the last one was active, actualized by tireless pursuit. Uh -huh. Talk to another neighbor. Look for another neighbor and ask them what they have they gotten. Kusienda uh -huh. tumebarikiwa. Preach to your neighbor. Yes, I give you an opportunity to help me preach today. Amen. Amen. And therefore, we are going to pray for the remaining minutes that Lord, may you reveal your purpose over my life. That Jesus, give me the grace to be a reader. And number three, Lord, I desire encounters. Buenas fue sana. And you see, some of us will, will still fight with God. We run away from this. I also have a prayer for you. And it is in Acts chapter number nine and verse number three that Paul was always persecuting the, script, uh, the, the, the Christians and the children of God. But on his way to Damascus, a light shone from heaven and he heard a voice and said that I am 
am Jesus. I pray for somebody today. May the light of God shine. May the light of God shine. And may you hear a voice that says, I am Jesus. I am Jesus. I am calling you to the place of transformation. I am Jesus. I am calling you to the place of change. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Would you lift up a prayer and pray, Father Jesus, reveal your plan over my life. Lord Jesus, reveal your purpose. Reveal yourself to me. May I know my reason for existence in the name of Jesus. Come on, let me hear the young people crying to Jesus. Shata frase ketalaba. Rakos katalina mashata. Yakos katalamayanda. Rakos satalaba. May you reveal yourself. May you reveal your plan over our lives. In the name of Jesus Christ. Say ketalaba. Rakos shatalaba. To every young person. Under the sound of my voice. May you reveal. May you reveal. May you reveal. Yourself. Anamashaka rabo seketa. Rakos ketelema. Come on Shiloh. Cry out to Jesus. As a person. And pray Jesus. Reveal. Reveal. As you reveal to our fathers. May you reveal the vision. May you reveal the plan. In the name of Jesus. Sheke paros katala mayande. Rikos katala ba. Rakos shatala ba. Yekos katerea mayanda. And as I stand on this altar. I decree and declare. That the Lord is revealing. Oh shake talaba seketa. Is revealing himself to you. Is revealing his plan over your life to you. In the name of Jesus. Oh shata raba. We refuse to live blindly. We refuse to walk blindly. We refuse to live blindly. In the name of Jesus. Seketa raba. Shaka talama yande. Rakos katalama. To some of you. God has called you to into business spaces. New business spaces. Oh shata raba yanda. May you see that in the name of Jesus. May the Lord open up the eyes of your understanding. May the Lord open up the eyes of your understanding. May the Lord open up the eyes of your understanding. In the name of Jesus. Erabashakata. Rakos katalina mayande. Zoka fraseketa. Yekos katalama. The reason for living. The reason for living. Somebody is getting the reason for living. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yakori prasakata. Shatala mayande. Rikos katala mayanda. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Shande Bazo Kotala Mayanda. May the light of God shine. May the light of God shine as we move and become readers. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. May the light of God shine upon us. In the name of Jesus. Transformation in our minds. Oh, Shatala Mayanda. Reko Satalama. As we read the word of God, I pray for new revelation. I pray for new revelation. Depth of the Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. And the ability that is in the word of God uh, may it be manifested uh, upon each and every one of us. Uh, the ability, oh Shatala Bayande, Rekos Katala Mayanda, Rekos Katalama, Sheketalaba, the ability, oh Shatara Mazoko Praseketa, Rekos Katalama, even as we read the word of God, uh, the ability to make the blind see that it rest on us, uh, the ability to make the lame walker that it rests on us the ability oh shatarab zeketalama to heal sicknesses let it rest on us in the name of Jesus Christ oh Rabba Shatalaba we shall lay hands on the sick and they shall be healed in the name of the Lord Shabro Seketalama Yande Rokos Katalama Rosa Ketalama Yande Shakatalaba Yanda somebody cry to Jesus oh Rabba Shande, Rakaza Katalama, Rikos Katalaba, Shake Talaba, from the back to the front, cry out to Jesus, Masha Talama, Maraba Zeke Talama. And now I pray in the name of Jesus uh, for encounters, uh, divine encounters, uh, that this week uh, and the rest of our lives uh, we shall live the lives of encounters uh, in our dreams, uh, even as we walk, uh, even as we walk, uh, encounters, uh, encounters, uh, encounters, uh, encounters, uh, encounters. Uh, to somebody in this house, uh, the light of God is shining. Uh, you're receiving an encounter. You're receiving an encounter. You're receiving an encounter. Counter, a rabbazoko praseket, 
Kata, Shaka Prasokote, Rekos Kata, you shall see cherubims, you shall see angels ascend and descend, divine encounters, divine encounters, divine encounters. Eraba Shatala Mayande, Rokos Katalaba, Encounters, Encounters in our dreams, Encounters, O Shataka Rabos Kata, Yeko Robo Zeketelenama, Rakos Kata, Rama Shatalaba. Somebody push it in the spirit, cry out to God for an encounter that brings transformation, an encounter that brings transformation, an encounter that brings change, an encounter. Oh shata kabra sokota yeko raba sokata rama shata la mayanda ma shata la mayanda Yana Mazoko Talama to somebody you walked in this place and you do not know Jesus. I pray may you hear a voice that says that I am Jesus. I am Jesus to all of us. May we hear a voice that says, I am Jesus. Hey, come to me. I am Jesus. Come to me. I am the Savior. Come to me. I am the deliverer. Come to me. I am able to restore the ears uh, that the locusts uh, and the cacaworms uh, and the palma worms uh, have eaten uh, come to me i am the lord uh, who is able to do exceedingly abundantly and above oh shatakaranama in the name of jesus christ uh, would you lift up your hands uh, as i pray for us uh, may we receive the grace for encounters may each and every one of us encounter jesus may we encounter jesus and his saving grace in the name of jesus christ there are some who walked in this place sick in your bodies i pray in the name of jesus by the power of god available in this house and the partnership of our father i pray may you be healed may every sickness be healed in the name of jesus may that weight be lifted in the name of jesus this week you shall see visions this week you shall see visions this week the purpose of god shall be revealed Revealed. The agenda of God shall be revealed in the name of Jesus and to the glory and of God the Father. It is in the name of Jesus we pray, believing and trusting. And God's people said, Amen. And God's people said, Amen. Would you lift up your hands above your head and celebrate the King of Kings? Amen. Amen. Look at your neighbor and tell them, Neighbor, I am transformed. Watch my space. I am transformed. Look for another neighbor and tell them, Neighbor, by the word of God today, I am living out of this place transformed. May the Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Amen.